You know, after Russia invaded the Ukraine, everyone deemed that Russia was the number one threat to the United States. Well, guys, we're going to be looking at some different statistics, and I'm going to be trying to show everyone that China, by far, it's not even close, is actually the number one overall threat. There's a lot to unpack when it comes to America's number one threat based on how powerful our military is compared to every other country. We can all agree our actual number one threat is from within. But when you're talking about our adversaries, it really does come down to a Russia v. China type model. And one of the first things that I'll look at, and you can see this, this is a global military index power I really don't like these rankings or the way they do these numbers because it's very hard to tell how much the United States is above Russia, how much Russia is above China, but you can see they have Russia and China right next to each other. I believe they had maybe a few months ago or like I looked at this like six months ago, they had China at number two, but you would look at something like this. You would see Russia being in front of China. You would see Vladimir Putin, the unstable situation, the nuclear bombs, the whole thing with, oh my God, Russia has the most advanced hypersonic missiles, which doesn't even make sense. China and the United States have far greater capability when it comes to technology, when it comes to military advancements. You've got Russia who is still using Soviet era military weapons. It's simple. The United States and China are not disclosing the type of military technology that we do have, but it's all anecdotal when it comes to the nuclear bombs because the second one of them goes off, it's basically impossible to stop and it does become a scenario where we look at, uh, you know, something being very catastrophic. We're trying to, like the whole idea with, oh, Russia has nuclear bombs. Everyone has nuclear bombs. We can sit here and use nuclear bombs and blow ourselves up all we want, but that is what we're trying to avoid. And this is more on the ground conflict, not even on the ground conflict. It's more posturing. It seems like militaries now, it's, it's all about posturing. It's all about showing how much money you have and then influencing different things just like the United States sending all the money to Ukraine. And Ukraine, funny enough, you would think Russia versus Ukraine, Russia would have better technology. Folks, it's not even close. The technology that NATO is giving Ukraine, I mean, it is so much more advanced. And there was a study done, I wanna get this right, but I believe the United States has spent more money on helping Ukraine than Russia has spent in their own war against Ukraine. It, it just shows you how much money the United States dumps into the military. It is remarkable. And guys, let's just look at this and let's just get this out of, way, out of the way. Military expenditures by country. This is back in 2019. You can see there's the United States, 731 billion. There's China, 261 billion. And everyone else is so much smaller. India is actually more than Russia, about six billion more in terms of their military budget. And then you can see all of the other countries, a lot of NATO countries in there. But the overall point here, this is not even close. And the thing is, it doesn't just stop at military because I know people will say, well, Russia has more natural resources. Yeah, they've got a bunch of oil. Uh, so does Canada. I mean, Canada has a ton of oil as well. It's not just about natural resources. It's, it's also about technology, the advancements in technology, and it really is China and the United States, the two big innovators. You also have Japan, who's very impressive as well. And then you can take a look at this index right here. This isn't even close. Look at the superpowers. This factors in everything. Look at the score. The United States on a little bit of a downward trend. So is China. Yeah, China ruined their economy with uh, dealing with the pandemic. They shut everything down for a year and a half. Because they're a communist country, of course they would. They want full control over their citizens. But even being communist, it doesn't even make sense how they handled the pandemic. But they really hurt their economy and probably set it back a few years. Either way, you can see that the score here is the big thing. You've got the United States 80.7, China 72.5. This is not just military. This is overall influence. China... It, they're right there. They're at 72. The United States is at 80. Japan is at 37. Japan is a huge asset for the United States as a deterrent to China. 
And that's the Pacific should be our number one focus when it comes to military. It's not. And I understand why it's not. There's the whole Ukraine thing. But let's be honest, there is so much NATO influence right now with Ukraine. When you look at NATO, it is not a healthy military agreement. When you have one country that has a military budget that dwarfs every other country in the agreement, I understand part of the agreement is we get benefits. The United States gets to put their military bases in those NATO countries countries, but the NATO agreement was made back as a deterrent, and now it's like the United States has ballooned to this superpower, and none of the other countries that are in NATO have really joined it, and now you've got all these NATO countries that are all deathly afraid of Russia, and it makes sense because they're in Europe, but the United States, respectfully, where we're positioned in the world, Russia is not a main concern. In between us and Russia is all of Europe and the Atlantic Ocean. But then you look to our west and you see China, you see Japan. I guess you could also say Russia is, but a lot of that land is uninhabitable. It is very cold. But you can see after the United States and China, this is this is in Asia. This is not including European countries. But after the United States and China, there's a massive fall off. Japan, India. I mean, India's birth rates are just completely out of control. India still apparently cannot solve their uh, air pollution problem. Apparently, they get really bad air pollution from construction dust. Uh, that's just remarkable. Russia is below India. It's not even close. So guys, when you're talking about influence, you're talking about 1v1. Who is the next superpower? Technically, right now in the world, there are two superpowers. Neither of them are Russia. And you can actually make the argument. And look, I know when it comes to what Russia did, they have to move up in terms of threat level because it's the year 2023 and we're dealing with an invasion which is something that should not be happening with our nuclear capabilities. We should not be dealing with this. It's too risky. I agree. We do need to move Russia up in terms of threat level, but they're still nowhere close to China. This is more NATO influence and NATO propaganda working within the United States. And you have all these European countries who rightfully are deathly afraid of Russia because what are you doing? It's 2021 and you're invading another country with all of these, uh, you know, nuclear capabilities that we currently have. That is extremely risky. I would be deathly afraid if I was a European country as well. But with where we're located in the world, our number one concern does need to be China. We have definitely donated our fair share to Ukraine. And listen, as someone who's military driven, if you're someone who's a military strategist giving money to Ukraine... Let's be honest. I know Republicans have kind of said war is terrible. We don't want to see people die. And I get that. I understand that thought. Normally, that's more of a Democrat thought. It's funny how American politics work. But if you can just send people money and then we don't waste any of our troops, none of our troops get put in harm's way. We just, you know, we basically finance the weakening of a, a main adversary in Russia. That's actually a very good deal. And, and listen, I'll tell you this right now, if Russia somehow, I, I just, I don't understand the end game with the Russia-Ukraine war because there's no way Russia is just going to pack their shit up, go back to their border and say, oh, we lost, we lost all these men, we lost all this money doing this. They're going to want something, right? They're going to want at least two eastern regions in Ukraine. So how does that get worked out? Uh, it, it's just a very uh, tough situation. Then you've got all the people profiting off of it, hoping the war lasts as long as possible, and the billion dollar checks keep coming from the United States and from other NATO countries as well. They're helping. Uh, but really, guys, the point is it's not close. When you see all these polls that come out and people are like, oh my God, Russia is the number one threat. Yes, I know. Right now, Russia is unstable. Everyone agrees. Everyone admits it. But when you look at the actual data points, I mean, take a look at that. That's not even close. You've got Japan, India, Russia, even South Korea as well. South Korea is a major. I would love to get a, like a NATO 2.0 alliance going with some of those Pacific states to really fend off China. And by the way, you want to talk about Russia, Ukraine. I mean, China is not permitting people to use Taiwan 
Like when Taiwan competes in something like the World Baseball Classic, you can't say Taiwan. The, like, so you want to talk about a stranglehold and a scary situation? That China-Taiwan situation, the Chinese aren't even allowing people to say Taiwan as an independent nation. Russia versus China, you can see it's not close. Russia worse than basically everything. I'm not saying Russia is not a power. They are, but uh, right now they are not a superpower. That is just the technical analysis of that. And they do have a ton of natural resources. You could make an argument, the most natural resources out of any country, but it's not like the United States cannot go to other places to get their gas. It is scary that Russia seems to be cozying up with Saudi Arabia that could be a problem. And if I was Russia, I would do that. The other issue is it's something called the Death Alliance um, that could rival NATO. And th this is like the end of the world we're talking about if something like this happens. But it would be India, China, and Russia against NATO. Uh, yeah, our, our the Earth would turn into a flaming ball of fire if that happened. That's just not... And it would be a rival alliance, but that would be China admitting that they are the Axis. I'm sure, I mean, obviously, this is all relative to the United States, but they are the Axis. They don't care. China, for a while now, they've tried to play this neutral card. Well, we don't support Russia, but we also don't support NATO. We're not going to send money to Ukraine to help them. There was rumors, would they send money to, to Russia to actually help Russia in that war? Could this force Russia and China into some type of an agreement? I mean, if you're Russia, what other options do you have? NATO is so powerful. And the reason NATO is powerful is because of the United States. If the United States were to leave NATO, uh, it would basically just be a European Union agreement. That's what NATO would be if the United States left it. Obviously, you know, the United States is not going to leave NATO. They get a lot of benefits from NATO, but it is an inorganic relationship we have because there's no one else in NATO that's close to our military strength. So there's always an obligation that's thrown onto the United States no matter what happens. We're done expanding NATO right now. Let's work out some type of peace agreement with Russia and Ukraine. Try and mend that up, and then we can really focus on... China, and I have seen, this is some great news right here. This is very good. Half of Americans name China as the greatest threat. And remember, there's we're not even talking about internet warfare where China creates TikTok and has, I mean, they've dumbed down kids. You're going to start seeing kids, and I'm not even trying to exaggerate. You could get a kid where if he grew up without TikTok and he goes into an adult and let's say he's 25 years old, he takes an IQ test. The kid without TikTok will probably score about 10 points better because the thing that TikTok does and people say, oh, you know, you're a YouTuber, you don't know. No, I'm telling you, YouTube is actually good for kids because it's long form content. The only reason YouTube added the shorts is because they had to compete with TikTok. What TikTok does to young people, the kids that are 11 or 12, it shortens their attention spans even more and it's constant crappy dopamine and it actually lowers their brain capacity. I'm not even kidding. So they are destroying our youth through TikTok. It's sad that it's happening, uh, but it is something we're going to have to adapt to and that's why Trump came out back in like 2018 and said, look, we're done with it. We're banning TikTok. They're stealing everything from us. This is annoying. And then back like a year ago or whatever, it comes out, oh, the United States wants to ban TikTok, but we also want to implement a bunch of other crap that would really restrict things when it comes to our rights on the internet and they can look up everything. And of course, the public is not going to like that. We just want TikTok banned. I don't care. We, don't, you know, that's the only bill we want to see. We don't want to see other things get slid into the bill that makes it more complicated. Uh, but that's just the story on TikTok, and that goes to China. I mean, the, the, guys, isn't it remarkable now? China, you look at the population that they have. They have a social credit score. And I, I'm not kidding. They, they legit, you have to show your face to go from point A to point B, to go over, like they have barriers. You have to show your face. And if you've said bad things about the government or you have a negative opinion on something, you're not going to go. It's gotten so bad now where... They're showing the videos and it's up against a vending machine and you have to show your face or show your ID and it scans it and says, okay, you can get this drink or you can't get this drink. They do have a social credit score. It's a full numbered system and it's like, well, where does this lead? How does this happen? 
Obviously, China, they have a much better stranglehold over their population because they are communist. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.